Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zhong. Today I'm going to share with you how to make a looping GPS animation by using the curved endpoint node in Blender 3D 3.0 Alpha version. Okay, now before I get into the tutorial, I quickly want to say today's video is sponsored by Wingfox Real Time Motion Graphic with Blender. This training is over 11 hours. It's cover procedural modeling, quick animation technique, shading tricks, EV optimization, and more. So if you want to take your Blender motion graphic skill to the next level, please hit the link in the description below. Alright, let's start the tutorial. Okay, now here I have already prepared all the 3D assets we need for this tutorial. There's a start point, end point, and a building. So it's just some basic 3D model. So you can either modeling it yourself or you can download this asset file in the description below and follow along the tutorial. So if you are going to modeling it yourself, please make sure you set the origin point for each 3D model to stick at the bottom. Okay, now before we get into the geometry node, we need to create the distance line. So press Shift A and add a plane. Press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Press E to extrude it. Press 2 to switch the selection mode to Edge Select. Or you can press here. Select one of the edge, then press Shift G and select Length. So if you select all the edge that have the same length, then press Ctrl B to bevel it. Change the segment to 10. Then press Ctrl R and scroll your mouse to add 3 loop cut. And then press S followed by X and tap 0 0.01 to scale it smaller. Then press Shift B and zoom into it. Change the selection mode to Vertex Select. Select the vertices at the center and delete it. Later, I will explain why we need to do this. Then press Numpad 1 to see the front view. Press Alternate G to turn on the X-ray view. Select and delete all the vertices at the top. Press Tab again to exit Edit Mode. Then right-click and convert it to Curve. And then now we can turn off the X-ray view by pressing Alternate G and put this beside. Then we can rename it Distant Line. And then I think we can try to scale the line bigger. And then press Ctrl A and apply the scale. Then now we can jump into the geometry node. So press Shift A and add a cube. Actually, you can add whatever mesh you want. It's not important at all. Then split the screen. Go to Geometry Node Editor. Click New to add a geometry node to the cube. Then pin the node. And then select the distance line we draw just now. And drag it into the Geometry Node Editor. Connect it to the group output. So now we have include the curve into the geometry node. Then press Shift A again and add a curve endpoint node. Okay, here I need to explain a little bit about this. So if you still remember, just now when we are creating the curve, we purposely delete one of the point in the center to disconnect the curve. And the reason why we are doing this is because when we are using the curve endpoint node, we can actually add two different instant objects to the start point and the end point. So in the 3D viewport, this is the start point and this is the end point and that basically means we need to have a start point and an end point when we are drawing the curve so without it we are not able to use curve end point node and add anything onto it and now let's try to add something to the point so you will understand it press shift a and add a point instant node and then use the eyedropper tools to select the start point and then let's add a joint geometry as well then connect our curve to the joint geometry so we can see the curve with the instant object at the same time. And now we need to add another instant object to the endpoint as well. So duplicate this, connect it to endpoint, and connect it to joint geometry. And then use the eyedropper to select our endpoint. Okay, now we can see we have two objects applied on the endpoint and the start point. But currently, it's overlapping together because our start point and end point is too close. So to split it, press Shift A and add a curve trim node. Add it before the end point node. Maybe we can select this and move it lower. Then hold Ctrl and right click, then disconnect this one. Connect the curve to joint geometry. So the curve trim node is actually used to trim our curve shorter. So let's try to adjust the end value to trim our curve shorter then our object won't overlap together anymore. And next, I want to rotate all the instant object to the correct direction. Then maybe we can move this beside so we have more space. And then to rotate it to the correct direction, press Shift A, go to Point, and add a Point Rotate node. Add it before the Point Instant. Select Point, and change the X axis to 90. And then duplicate the Point Rotate, and put before the end point, point Instant as well. So now, we have rotate everything to the correct direction. Then next, we need to add the mesh to the curve. 
So to do it, I think we can move this higher, then press Shift A and add a curve to mesh node. Add it after the curve trim. And then press Shift A again, go to curve primitive and add a curve circle. Then connect the curve to profile curve and then change the curve circle radius to 0 0.02. Then I think we can move the entire curve slightly higher. So to do it, press Shift A and add a transform node. Add it after the curve to mesh node. Change the G axis to 0 0.04. Let's try 0 0.05. Yeah, I think this is better. Okay, next we want to make a looping distance line animation. So to do it, let's go to output properties. Change the frame start to 0 the frame end to 140 this is actually the animation length so the length is up to you whether you want it to be longer or shorter and i want to set the frame rate to 29 so in the geometry node editor let's go to curve trim node this one change the end value to 1 and the start value to 0.999 make it very close to 1 then in the timeline drag your time indicator to 0 in the geometry node Hover the start value and press I to add a keyframe. Then drag the time indicator to the last frame, 140. Then in the geometry node, change the start value to 0. Then hover it and press I to add another new keyframe. And now I want to animate the endpoint as well. Drag your time indicator to 70. Hover the end value and press I to add a keyframe. Then go to the last frame, change the end value to 0 0.001. Then hover it and press I to add a new keyframe. And then now try to press spacebar to play the animation. And now we can see when the animation reached the last frame or the first frame, two of the instant object is overlapping together. The reason is because currently the origin point of our instant object is in the middle of the object. So that means when the instant object attached on the curve start point and end point, the start point and end point is too close and the object is overlapping together. So to fix this issue, we need to move our origin point of the instant object to the outer ring instead of middle drag our thumb indicator back to zero and then press shift b to jump to our 3d element select the endpoint press tab to go into edit mode press ctrl numpad 7 to see the bottom view select these vertices press shift s and select cursor to select it then press tab again to exit edit mode go to object and set the origin to 3d cursor and then we need to do the same thing for the start point go into edit mode press ctrl numpad 7 then select these vertices, press Shift S, cursor to select it, press tab to exit the edit mode, go to object and set the origin point to 3D cursor, and then go back to our main object. And then we can see currently we are in the frame 0 and two of the object is not overlap anymore. Then press spacebar again to check the animation. Not sure if you guys notice, every time when the animation reach the end, the animation will slow down and stop and then move again. But this is actually not what we want. We want to make it a looping animation. So that means we don't want it to stop at the last frame and then start again. So to fix this issue, let's go to graph editor. Select our main object. And the reason why the animation is slowing down at the end is because for default, Blender is setting the interpolation mode to be a Bezier mode. And if we don't want our animation to slow down and stop at the last frame, we need to change the curve to linear mode. So let's press A to select all keyframe. Right click, go to interpolation mode and select linear. Then press spacebar to play the animation again. And now you can see the animation is not slowing down anymore. It's keep moving. And now we have finished our animation part. So next, we need to add the floor and the building element to our scene to finish the artwork. So to do it, let's unpin the geometry node. In the 3D viewport, press Shift S and select cursor to world origin. Then press Shift A and add a cube. Again, you can add whatever mesh you want. It's not important at all. And then press New to add a new geometry node. And then in the geometry node editor, press Shift A, go to mesh primitive and add a grid. Connect it to the group output. Then press Shift A again and add a point stone. Use the eyedropper to select our building. And then currently the building is too big. So let's add a point scale node. Change the type to float. Change the factor to 0.5. And then in the grid node here, change the size X and Y to 8 maybe. And you can experiment with the other size as well. Depends on how big you want it to be. I think we can scale our distance line 
slightly smaller and then remember to press Ctrl A to apply the scale after you scale it and then we need to add the floor so in the 3D viewport press Shift A and add a plane press S to scale it bigger and then we can start to add camera into the scene press Shift A again add a camera and then press Ctrl Alternate 0 to set current view as camera go to camera properties tab and change the focal length to 120 so it will look like an isometric view and then press Shift Tilt and start to adjust the angle you like then go to render properties tab change the render engine to cycles then change the device to GPU compute then change the viewport display to render preview then go to world properties tab change the color to sky texture then change the sun size to 20 the biggest number you put the softer shadow you will get and then change the sun intensity to 0.1 and then change the sun rotation to minus 30 and the strength to 0.5 you can experiment with other numbers as well, don't have to follow me. And next, we can start to add material onto it. So I want to add purple color to the map pointer and the distant line. And I want to add gray color to the floor. And the other things, I will just leave it white. So let's go to our start point. Select it, then go to material properties tab, press new to add a new material. Then press tab to go into edit mode, hover the map pointer and press L to select it. Then press plus button and press new to add a new material. Then change the base color to a purple color. And then press assign to assign the material. Then press tab to exit the edit mode. And then next, I'm going to add the same material to the distant line. So select it, go back to our geometry node editor. In the geometry node editor, press shift a go to material and select material assign add it after the transform node then select our purple color then next we need to add color to the floor so select the floor go to material properties tab add a new material and change the base color to gray color and then next let's try to change the building color to bluish color as well let's select the building go to material properties tab add a new material and change the base color to a bluish color and then press numpad 0 to switch back to camera view preview the render and then we done it so if you like my video please subscribe and see you next week bye